Okay, class, today we're in section 8.3, find special products of polynomials. Section 8.3, find special products of polynomials. Before, you multiplied polynomials. Now, you will use special product patterns to multiply polynomials. Key vocabulary, binomials, trinomials. Key vocabulary, binomials, trinomials. All right, please read this correct paragraph below. Become familiar with this diagram and get the key concept in your notes. Once again, please read the paragraph below. Get familiar with this diagram and also get the key concept in your notes before I begin to explain. Key concept, square of a binomial pattern. Square of a binomial pattern. Algebra. A plus B squared is equal to A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. Example, X plus 5 squared is equal to X squared plus 10X plus 25. A minus B squared is equal to A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. Example, 2X minus 3 squared is equal to 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. Example 1, use the square of a binomial pattern. Example 1, use the square of a binomial pattern. Find the product. So here we have 3x plus 4 squared. 3x plus 4 squared. Now, what they're trying to get you to realize here is that if you use a pattern, then the problem will be shorter to do. But to appreciate that, let's do the problem the long way first. We got 3x plus 4 squared. Now, that means 3x plus 4 times 3x plus 4. And when we work this out, we're going to use the FOIL method. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 3x times 4. 3x times 4, that's 12x. 4 times 3x is 12x. 4 times 4 is 16. Now look at this row and look at what you have. Now, if we use the pattern, this is the pattern. I got 3x right here. I automatically square it. So 3x squared becomes 9x squared. 3 times 3 is 9. x times x is x squared. Then I go to my last one. I go to the 4. 4 squared is 16. Notice we got the same thing. The first term that we got and the last term that we got is the same thing that we get when we do the FOIL. Once again, here, 3x squared is 9x squared. 4 squared is 16. Done. Now, to get the middle term, Notice here, to get our middle term, we got to say 12x plus 12x. Well, what's 12x plus 12x? That's 24x. But notice we're repeating it twice. 12x once, 12x again. So over here, what you would say is, you would say 4 times 3x. What's 4 times 3x? 12. What's 12 times 2? 24. So we would get 24x. Notice we got the same thing here. 24x. All right, now once again, we square the first term, we square the last term. Then we take both terms and we multiply them together. 3x times 4 is 12x. 12x times 2 is 24. Once again, notice we got our first term, like we did over here. We got our last term, like we did over here. And we got two of these. This is why we multiply the 3x times 4 by 2. And we end up with 24. Notice, this was done in basically one step. This took three steps, or three or four, depending on how you want to look at it. Now, let's look at the uh, key concept again. A, we square that. It becomes A squared. B, we square that, it becomes b squared. 
A times B is AB, and we multiply that by 2. That gives us 2AB. Right? Then we're going to use an actual numerical example. All right, x plus 5 squared, all we do is what? We square the x, we square the 5, we multiply 5 times x, so x times 5, that gives us 5x, and then we multiply that by 2, 10x, and we're finished. As opposed to doing it the long way. All right, let's look at the difference. a minus b squared. Square the first term, a squared. Square the second term, b squared. A times B is a negative AB, A minus B. So it's going to be a negative AB. Multiply that by 2, we get a negative 2AB. And we're finished. An actual problem. 2X squared becomes 4X squared. 3 squared becomes 9. 2X times 3 is 6X. 6X times 2 is a negative 12X. And we're finished. All right, let's go back down to B. We got 5x minus 2y squared. 5x minus 2y squared. Now, we're going to do this the short way by using the binomial pattern. 5x squared is 25x squared. A negative 2 squared is a positive, excuse me, a negative 2y squared is a positive 4y squared. 5x times 2y is equal to 5x times a negative 2y is equal to a negative 10xy. A negative 10xy times 2 is equal to a negative 20xy. And we are finished. For those who don't see this, 5x squared, they wrote it for you. A negative 2y squared, they wrote it for you. 5x minus 2y, multiply those together. And then multiply it by 2. So 5x times 2y multiplied by 2. And you have the answer with far less work. Okay, next we have the sum and difference pattern. The sum and difference pattern. To find the product of x plus 2 times x minus 2, you can multiply the two binomials using the fall pattern. And everybody's familiar with the fall pattern. And when you get through doing that, you notice that your two middle terms are going to disappear. One's negative, one's positive. So you end up with x squared minus 4. This suggests a pattern for the product for the product of the sum and difference of two terms. Key concept. Sum and difference pattern. Once again, make sure this is in your notes. Algebra. a plus b times a minus b is equal to a squared minus b squared. Example. If I got x plus 3 times x minus 3 it's going to equal to x squared minus 9. So in other words, square the first term, square the last term, and then only put a negative sign in the middle or a minus sign in the middle, and I'm finished. Now this is based on this example they showed you up here. Once again, notice when you use the for, you got x times x, that's x squared. x times a negative 2, that's a negative 2x. 2 times x, that's going to be a positive 2x. Positive 2 times a negative 2 is a negative 4. Notice, the middle terms disappear. The middle terms will disappear. And you're just left with x squared minus 4. That's it. So now that you know this pattern, when you see this combination, you can literally go from here to right here and not have to do it the long way. So with that in mind, then, in example 2, use the sum and difference pattern. I got t plus 5 times t minus 5. All right, what's t squared? t squared. What's 5 squared? 25. I got a positive and a negative, so it tells me that my middle term is going to be negative because the middle terms are going to disappear. I am finished. Let's go to b. 3x plus y times 3x minus y. Notice, same thing here. Only difference is positive, negative. That means the middle terms are going to disappear. So what is 3x squared? 9x squared. Excuse me, what is 3x squared? 9x squared. What is y squared? y squared. What goes in the middle? Negative. Finished. Okay, now in example 3, we're going to use special products and mental math. Special products and mental math. Use special products to find the product of 26 times 34. 
Notice if you said 26 times 34, it's almost impossible to do it in your head. But using special products, you can do it in your head. Solution. Notice that 26 is 4 less than 30, while 34 is 4 more than 30. So I can rewrite 26 as 30 minus 4. I can rewrite 34 as 30 plus 4. Notice how I got a sum and a difference based on the same number. Sum and a difference based on the same number. Now I can use that rule I used before. What is 30 squared? 900. I can do that in my head. What's 4 squared? 16. I can do that in my head. Now all I got to do is say, what's 900 minus 16? 884. So something I had to do by calculator before, I can actually now do in my head using the special product uh, in mental math. Once again, 26 and 34. I can rewrite those using the same number, which is 30. 30 minus 4, 30 plus 4. 30 squared, 900. 4 squared, 16. I know the middle terms are going to disappear. So all I got to do is say 90 minus 16, which is 884. Example 4, solve a multi-step problem. Okay, please read the problem below before I begin to explain. Read the problem below and make sure that you... Um, make the connection between the words here and the diagram there, which you should know based on the uh, explanation I gave you in a couple of sections before. Border Collies, the color of the dark patches of a Border Collie's coat is determined by a combination of two genes. An offspring inherits one patch color gene from each parent. Each parent has two color genes and the offspring has an equal chance of inheriting either one. The gene B is for black patches and the gene R is for red patches. Any gene combination with a B results in a black patch. Suppose each parent has the same gene combination, BR. The Punnett square shows the possible gene combinations of the offspring and the resulting patch color. What percent of the possible gene combinations of the offspring result in, a, in black patches? Show how you can use a polynomial to model the possible gene combinations of the offspring. Okay, now first let's make sure we understand the Punnett square. Okay, one parent, they have the B and the R gene. The other parent, also B and the R gene. All right, let's look at the combinations. B times B, we give us BB. B and R, we give us BR. R and B, we give us BR. And R and R, we give us RR. Solution, step one. Notice that the Punnett square shows four possible gene combinations uh, of the offspring. Of these combinations, three result in black patches. So that means 75% of the possible gene combinations result in black patches. Step two, model the gene from each parent with 0.5B plus 0.5R. There is an equal chance that the collie inherits a black or red gene from each parent. So since it's equal, that's like saying 50-50. The possible genes of the offspring can be modeled by 0.5B plus 0.5R squared. Notice that this also represents the area of the Punnett square. Expand the product to find the possible patch colors of the offspring. Now when we expand it, we're going to use the binomial pattern. So remember, 0.5b squared is going to be this. 0.5r squared is going to be that. Then we take these two, multiply them together, and then multiply by 2. That's where they got that from. So 0.5b times 0.5r times 2 ends up being 0.5br. So now consider the coefficients of the polynomials. You end up with 0.25b squared plus 0.5br plus 0.25. Notice 25% black, 50% black right here. So the total is going to be 75% of the possible gene combinations will result in black patches. 
Remember, 0.5 squared is equal to 0.25.